something serious this week, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, it's a web Reichwin here, and welcome to the team analysis for PPL Week 4, Season 2, Division 1. This week we are playing Kino of the FC Eviton, and I do want to have a little disclaimer at the start of this. Ah, the headset's in the wrong place. Um, that uh, I am a little bit ill this week, I just got back from EGX, and you know, post-con flu is a thing. So I'm a little bit ill, so apologies in advance if I kind of ramble, if I go off on some tangent and lose track of what I'm saying. My brain's all kind of floopy right now. Um, so apologies in advance if that does indeed happen. But... If you don't know what the Pokemon Premier League is, the PPL, uh, links will be in the description to the, the PPL channel and the PPL Twitter. It is a draft-based league, much like any other you may have heard of, and um, I'm part of it. But I am not having the greatest start to the season. The New to Queen's Park Rangers, our team, is currently, go away phone, 0-3. We haven't got a win yet. And... We're playing Keno of the FC Everton this week, who are 2-1. and one. They've had a pretty decent start to the season so far. Um, now, before we get into the actual teams, let's take a quick look at the league table in the MVP race to see what's going down. So you can see, having a look at the league table, you can see we're 11th. We're pretty much near the bottom of the, at the bottom of the table. If we stay in 11th place, if we finish the season in 11th place, we get relegated down to Division 2 next season. Um, so we're already in a relegation scrap, um, and we're only in week three, uh, uh, sorry, after week three, so um, it's going to be a tough season from here on out, but I did want to bring up something that's kind of interesting. If you look at the teams we've played so far, and you see where they are in the league table, Miami Road to Heat, Parasect Germain, and Kelta Dino, they're the top three, and this week we're playing the FC Eviton, who are in fourth. So in the first four weeks, we're playing the teams that are at the top of the table. Great. Um, so I'm, I can't be too mad at our position right now. I know we're 0-3, but I still feel like we've been playing decently well. We've prepped okay-ish. Obviously, everything could be better, of course. But uh, I feel like we've been playing okay, and we've been planning okay. So it will result in a win at some point. Uh, it's just, unfortunately, I think the teams that we've had to go up against in the start of the season. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So we've been playing really, really good teams so far, and that does not stop this week in Week 4. We're playing Kino, the FC Eviton. Um, but before we get into the teams, I just wanted to highlight the MVP race. Bearing in mind that uh, you can see the top 10 of the MVP race right now. Bearing in mind that we haven't brought him, uh, we didn't bring him last week. Uh, Domanitan is still at the top with 8 kills, 2 deaths, and a plus 6 differential. Still up in first place in the MVP race, which is fantastic. Um, so that's really great to see. Um... So hopefully we can get some other mons heading up there, because after that, the next mon from NPR that is actually in the MVP race is... Uh, I guess we're at Mo, even though I haven't brought him to a match yet. He's 0-0. Uh, but one I've actually brought to a match would be Horlucha, who is 1-2, and two, and he's in 88th place. That's the next mon down after Domanitan. So it'd be nice if we can get some, some other mons in the MVP race. So, let's see if we can make that happen this week. Um against Kino. So, let's get into uh, the team analysis. So, the potential team that uh, Kino can be bringing against me, um, he has a very, very, very scary team, and his team is Latias, Azumarill, Cobalion, Entei, Amoongus, Thunderous Therian, Swampert, Kadabra, Regirock, and Drapion. So that's a really, really scary team. There's some really nice synergy uh, going on around his team. And uh, the the ultimate counter to High Dragon is Azumarill. He has Azumarill. Um, the um, his Entei uh, kind of completely runs through me, um, aside from one one that I've set aside for that. Um, Thunderous Therian is a huge threat. Uh, the coverage it gets and how how powerful it is is just so scary. Um, and of course, you can never forget things like Latias, Cobalion. And uh, even Kadabra is really, really uh, annoying to try and take down because, of course, he can run me he can be running that Focus Ash Magic Guard set. Um, and then if he does so, he can bring it in late game and, you know, use it um, effectively. And Regirock, of course, is a huge pain to try and take down. So, one of the first things I actually noticed about this team is that he has, like, 17 million switch-ins to a Domanitan. That being a physically defensive Latias can... Uh, doesn't... I think it only takes over half 
uh, from U turn if Delmanitan's banded. So, yeah, that's a thing. He can have a thick fat Azumara, which can just tank pretty much any hit from that guy. Um, Entei can switch him decently well, aside from Earthquake. Um, uh, physically defensive Swampert can just tank all the hits. Uh, Regirock, perfect switch in. Um, so he has a lot of switch ins to Delmanitan. Uh, hence why I'm not bringing it. For two weeks in a row, I'm not bringing Domanitan, which may seem crazy, but I just felt like he had so many options to try and uh, take it down and so many options to try and stop it. It wasn't worth it. There's other ones that can do Domanitan's job better. This week, anyway. So, um, yeah, so I noticed that Entei kind of runs through me, as does Azumarill, um, and I needed to try and stop those things. And of course, you have to try and prep for things like Thunderous Theory. Uh, so I knew I wasn't bringing Domanitan. So let's get into the team that I've actually brought. So, uh, if you guys don't know my team, uh, the team that I can potentially bring to this match is Hydreigon, Mew, Mamoswain, Whimsicott, Tentacruel, Darmanitan, Rotomo, Horlucha, and Dublade. Um, so, the ones that I've opted to bring this week. Um, initially, I saw Thunder Asterion. And I wanted to bring Rotomo, especially defensive Rotomo, because that's a pretty good switch in. And then I realized that it gets Sludge Wave. I was like, ah! That's not ideal. Uh, a max attack, max special attack, modest um, sludge wave to a specially defensive Romo to hit KOs it. So I was like, that's not what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I decided to focus on someone else first. Uh, that being, um, apologies if you can hear that, by the way. Uh, there's some construction work going on in the building right now. And they're doing drilling and hammering and all the all other constructional things. Um, so I, I wanted to look at another threat for, first, and that's Entei. As I said, Entei kind of runs through me, apart from one mon, and this one may actually be kind of expected um, as my Entei counter, uh, and that is Hydreigon. Shield the Hydreigon uh, with Levitate, max HP, max defense, bold nature, dark pulse, earth power, roost, and toxic. Um, so this guy, physically defensive Hydreigon, as I said, it's not, it's not the most common set, but the fact I brought it last week to try and deal with Victini, and the fact that it's pretty well known that Miguel brought it in GBA to stop an Entei uh, is, you know, Akino may actually see this one coming. But I felt like I didn't have a choice. Uh, I needed it, otherwise it just runs through me. There's nothing I can do about it, it just runs through me. Um, even a physically defensive tentacle, it can take, you know, sacrifice, it can take stone ages, it can't take bulldozers though. And I could have brought like, you know, Air balloon, but I can't switch into a sacred fire from it because an air balloon's broken, and then I can't. I don't have a. I don't have my switch anymore. So, um, I, I didn't want tentacle as the answer. I had to. I had to have high dragon. Physically defensive high dragon had to be the way. Uh, so, like I said, he's my switch into Entei. Um, I have the dark pulse for a bit of stab. Plus, it also hits the la likes of Latias and Kadabra. I have earth power to try and hit the likes of Entei, Cabalion, and Regirock a little bit harder. Um, and of course, Toxic, try and wear things down. Roost to get the HP back so I can be a switch in uh, multiple times, especially if he gets a Sacred Fire Burn. I don't want to be getting worn down too fast. And if he does, that'll actually be, actually be quite nice, so it means I'm not poisoned. Um, so, that is uh, Shield the Hydreigon there to just counter the Entei. A little bit of chip damage on things, basically just a switch into it. Um, so, that's Shield the Hydreigon. The next one that I'm bringing on this team is Capricious the Whimsicott with the Life Orb Infiltrator. 40 in HP, max special attack, 212 in speed, timid nature with Giga Drain, Moonblast, Psychic, and Hidden Power Ground. So, um, this Whimsicott. Um, can I just put a decent decent number on his team? Um, the only two mons that I don't hit um, super effectively on his team are Thunderous and Kadabra, and Kadabra's pretty frail as it is. Thunderous is still an issue that we're going to come back to, but um, this Whimsicott with Life Orb. Um, it can do a really, really good amount of damage on his team. Giga Drain is obviously stab plus a little bit of recovery. For the likes of Swampert, Azumarill, and Regirock, of course, assuming he's not bringing Sap Zipper, because I don't think he is, he's either going to be bringing huge power like the standard, because it kind of runs through my team, or if he wants to try and have a, a Dalmanitan counter, he has a lot of them, but he may bring Thick Fat Azumarill. Who knows? But I do not see him bringing Sap Zipper. Um, and then have Moonblast, again, for stab, plus um, Latias. Hits that pretty, pretty hard indeed. Um, also I have Infiltrate in case he wants to have some sub calm minding Latias shenanigans because that's kind of terrifying. Um, I then have Psychic to hit Amoongus. Uh, I was considering running Hurricane, didn't want to miss because Hurricane also hits the likes of Drapion if that, if that wants to switch in. 
Then again, I do have Moonblast, which hits pretty hard. Also, I have Hidden Power Ground to hit the Drapion, Cobalion, and Entei. Um, so the only two mons that I don't hit super effectively on the team, Thunderous Therion and Kadabra. But again, Kadabra's kind of kind of frail and thunderous. Um, I have other ways to deal with that. Apologies. Ugh, I hate being ill, guys. Ugh, be right back. Alrighty, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. I just, I hate being ill. Jesus Christ. Um, so that's Capricious the Whimsicott. The next one we're bringing on the team is LL Cruel J, the Tentacruel. Um, and we are bringing a physically defensive Tentacruel. Black Sludge, Max HP, Max Defense, Bold Nature, Scold, Sludge Wave, Knock Off, and Rapid Spin. Um, so this guy, he, as I said, he's kind of a switch into Entei, apart from Bulldoze. If he's kind of choice locked, he can be a pretty good switch into it. Um, and then, you know, I can fire back really, really hard with a Scold. Um, it's also kind of a switch into Regirock, because he can't really do much to a Tentacruel. I mean, he can paralyze him. Yay. But that's about it, really. I mean, he can seismic toss me. Great. But I can fire back with a really powerful Scold. So that Scold does hit the likes of Entei and Regirock. It does also hit the Azumarill. Obviously, it's not going to be doing too much. But if I can burn that thing, that would be absolutely spectacular. And throwing burns around all over the place is going to be really, really nice in this match. Um, some of his most powerful threats really do not appreciate being burned. So... Um, Sludge Wave, I do also have for super effective damage on the Azumarill. Knock Off also hits the likes of Latias Plus, just trying to get rid of items. Obviously, it's not really doing too much, because I do have a minus attack nature, but it's mainly there just to get rid of the items. I'm fully, I, I'm actually expecting him to bring a Scarf Latias to this match. Um, I think that would be his, his Scarfer of choice in this match. So if I can knock off that, that, um, that Choice Scarf off Latias, if it's locked into, like, Draco or something, um, or, you know, whatever, if I can make some kind of prediction he doesn't go for a second move on Tentacruel and I can knock off his Scarf, that would be cool. Um, and then, of course, Rapid Spin to get rid of, ha get rid of Hazards. It's not super important in this match. I don't have any Mons that are actually weak to Rocks, um, but it's just the principle. Don't want to be getting worn down. Um, so, need Rapid Spin. So, that is LL Cruel J, the Tentacruel. Um, the fourth mod on this team... Uh, is Pokinope the Mamoswine with the Focus Sash, Oblivious, Max Attack, Max Speed, Adamant, Ice School Crash, Ice Shard, Earthquake, and Stealth Rock. Um, this guy is kind of my Sash lead. I did bring it last week. It did what it needed to do. Probably could have used it a little bit better, but it did what it needed to do. And uh, his team, his own, only hazard removal is Latias. And like I said, I expect that to be his Scarfer. He may bring Scarf Defog, that could definitely be a thing. But if he is Scarfed and goes with Defog, then he's locked into it. It gives me momentum to do something I want to do. I can play around it. So, uh, Rocks really punish his team. The likes of Entei and Thunderous do not want to be switching in on Rocks all the time. And like I said, Latias is his only removal. So, um, that is going to be really, really nice. Because if he doesn't, if for whatever reason he doesn't bring Latias, Rocks are there to stay. If he brings Latias without Defog, those Rocks are there to stay. So, uh, they're going to be really, really nice to try and wear down his team. And wearing down his team is going to be crucial in this match, and you'll see why. So, um, I have Ice School Crest, Ice Shard, and Earthquake. Powerful stab attacks, priority. Um, the reason I have... Oh, that's not the right speed, by the way. I screwed up the speed. I've actually speed crept, and I can't remember what the actual speed was. Hold on. Two seconds. It was, uh... It was... Two... What was it? 196 speed? Two... 180... It was enough speed to outspeed a max speed uh, Jolly or Timid Swamper. Uh, because I can't outspeed anything quicker. Um, with a with an adamant nature, I can't really outspeed anything quicker than Mamoswine. So I, uh, I'm just going to try and outspeed what's slower than Mamoswine. Um, so that does uh, leave uh, things like Latias, Cabalion, Entei, Thunderous, and Kadabra to outspeed. But I do outspeed Azumarill, Amoongus, Swampert, Regirock, and Drapion, who I can hit up real, real hard uh, with some really, really powerful hits. So, um, yeah, uh, that's what um, Mammoth Wind's there for. Sash lead, get up rocks, because rocks are going to be really important, and try and get some, some good damage off. That's why I'm an adamant nature. Get some good damage off with Ice School Crash, Ice Shard, and Earthquake on the remainder of the team. Hits the likes of Latias, Amoongus, Thunder, Steering, Cabalion, Entei, and Regirock pretty damn hard with the combination of those three moves, so... Um, yeah, that's poking up the Mammoth Swine. The fifth Mon, the penultimate Mon on this team. For once, guys, I'm bringing Mew, and I'm not bringing a defensive set. 
Praise the Lord, right? Right? Yeah. It's kind of defensive, but it's not really. The fifth mod on this team is DOV the Mew with the Assault Vest. With the Synchronize, Max HP, 196 Special Attack, and 60 in Special Defense. Calm Nature, Giga Drain, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Super Fang. And uh, this guy, uh, it's specifically EV'd, so it can take any two hits from a Latias. If it's a Specs Latias, I can take any two hits from that guy. I can respond with an Ice Beam, which will do a hell of a lot of damage. Um, the, what, I, what I hit on this team is almost everything. Giga Drain for the likes of Swampert, Azumarill, Regirock, plus I need some recovery if I'm Assault Vest. Um, Earth Power for the likes of Cobalion, Entei, and Regirock. Uh, Ice Beam for Latias, Amoongus, Thunderous Therian, and Super Fang to wear everything down. Like I said, wearing everything down is going to be crucial, and you'll see why on the last mod on the team. Wearing everything down is going to be crucial, so Super Fang is really, really going to help me with that. Getting things down to half is going to really, really help me. And with the Assault Vest, I can take hits. I can take hits. Um, even, you know, Shadow Balls from a Specs Latias, I can take those. So it's um, it's it's there to tank special hits and respond with some pretty powerful attacks. Obviously, none of them are stab. I don't have any stab attacks. I have Giga Drain, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Super Fang, but it's going to really, really help me this match. Like I said, it's wearing things down. That's all I need this match is just to wear things down. And I have a, a hefty amount of special attack investment with 196, so I can actually be doing a decent amount of damage to most things. Um, so that's what Mew's there for, to just try and get some really good damage on, on the likes of his team. So... Um, that is DOV the Mew, there to wear things down and tank for some special hits if possible. So, the last one on the team, the crux of the whole thing. The point of this team is to wear everything down, with Stealth Rocks, Toxic, and Mew putting in a shift as well with Super Fang. It all comes down to this last mod, and that is Wrestling Pun the Holucha. With the Power Herb, Unburden. 60 HP, 252 attack, 196 speed, jolly nature, swords dance, high jump kick, acrobatics, sky attack. Now, wrestling upon the whole lucha here, just needs a little bit of prior damage on everything, and he okos everything with a swords dance. So if I can find the opportunity to get up a swords dance, I then outspeed every non scarfer on his team, that's what that speed investment's for, I outspeed every non scarfer on the team, I get off a Power Herb Sky Attack, which Oko's a lot of things at plus two, I then have Unburden, I outspeed, I've popped my Power Herb, and then I have High Jump Kicks and Acrobatics that outspeed everything, even scarfers, I outspeed everything I can pop off High Jump Kicks and Acrobatics, which Oko's everything. With the exception of a physically defensive Swampert and a physically defensive Thunderous Therian, which he may actually bring, because it has a very, very good matchup against Holucha. So a physically defensive Thunderous Therian could very well be coming this week. Who knows? Um, but the um, Sky Attack has a chance to Oko a physically defensive Latias at plus two. Or, or I'm going to run through the entire team. This is assuming at plus two, with Stealth Rocks up, they've taken one lot of Stealth Rocks damage, um, and I'm at plus two. Let's run the calcs. Latias, an offensive Latias, uh, um, dies to either Sky Attack or Acrobatics. Obviously, I'm going to have to check for a Scarf, but it dies to either Sky Attack or Acrobatics. They're both guaranteed Okos. Physically defensive Latias has a chance to Oko with Sky Attack after rocks. A max HP Azumarill dies to Sky Attack and has a chance to Oko with Acrobatics. Cabalion dies to High Jump Kick and has a chance to Oko from, from Sky Attack. Entei dies to High Jump Kick, Sky Attack, and Acrobatics. Physically defensive Amoongus dies to Sky Attack and Acrobatics. Thunderous Therian, just an uh, offensive, uninvested Thunderous Therian, dies to Sky Attack, High Jump Kick, and has a chance to die from Acrobatics. Physically defensive Thunderous Therian is two hit KO'd by Sky Attack, High Jump Kick, and has a chance to be two hit KO'd by Acrobatics. Physically defensive Swampert is two hit KO'd by Sky Attack, High Jump Kick, and Acrobatics. Kadabra is Oko'd by everything. Physically defensive Regirock has a chance to be Oko'd by High Jump Kick. Oko'd by High Jump Kick. Okoing a physically defensive Regirock is unheard of. Drapion dies to everything. Sky Attack, High Jump Kick, Acrobatics. That's uninvested Drapion. So at plus two, Holucha puts in the work. 
I just need to find the opportunity to get up a Swords Dance and pop off that Sky Attack. Like I said, I outspeed every non-Scarfer on his team, so all I need to do is find the opportunity to get up a Swords Dance. Once I do that, I'll be golden. Make sure the Scarfer's out of the way, if I can find an opportunity to get up a Swords Dance, and like I said, a little bit of chip damage on everything. All I need is literally like two or three Rock Switch Ins. That's all I need, and that's going to really help with the likes of Super Fang, plus a little chip damage on other things like Hydreigon and Whimsicott and all the other mons on my team. All I need is to get in Holucha, get up a Swords Dance, get off that Sky Attack, and I just sweep his whole team, as long as I don't miss any high jump kicks. That would be the only thing that can stop me, or, you know, protect or anything like that. There's no ghost type, so there's nothing that can stop me on that front. It's just the protect shenanigans, or if I just straight up miss. That would be the only thing that stops me. So, that's the team. What do you guys think of this team? Do you think that I've got this match against Kino? One final rundown of the team, we've got a physically defensive Hydreigon, we've got a Life Orb Whimsicott, Black Sludge physically defensive Tentacruel, we've got a Sash Lead Mamoswine, an Assault Vest Mew, and a Power Herb Horlucha. So what do you guys think? Have I got this match? Week 4? The match will be uploaded tomorrow. I'm facing him later today. I hope it's, go it it's going to be a good match regardless. Kino's a really good friend of mine, and uh, he's put in a lot of work for the PPO he's made like all of the graphics like the logo for PPL, PPL D2, uh, just all of the things that he's made uh, he's made so many logos, so many layouts and thumbnails and all that stuff, he makes all the graphics for all the recaps and the power rankings and all that stuff so Kino is the man um, so make sure to go down in the description, links will be to his channel of course as well and I will see you guys tomorrow for PPL week 4 against Kino and the FC Eviton. Doodaloo